Hey guys, Mike here from Fortinet Guru. Um, I'm going to have a short and sweet video about updating the firmware of a FortiSwitch, which, as you guys may have guessed, is a lot like updating on a uh, FortiGate or FortiMail or FortiManager or pretty much anything like that. Uh, it involves, from my perspective, what I consider best practice steps. You log into your FortiSwitch, and this is for the FortiSwitch that's locally managed. It's not managed by the FortiGate. You log into the switch and you check the firmware you're currently running. You check the release notes for the firmware you're trying to go to to make sure that you can upgrade straight to that firmware. If not, there may be steps involved. Uh, stepping is important because over versions of code, various things get deprecated or you know, uh, the OS changes the way it handles certain commands and things like that. So when you're going from you know, one version to another, if there's a change, it'll step it the way it should so that when you go to an even newer version of code you don't have to worry about um, commands or anything like that going bad right and stuff acting weird and shenanigans and things like that so but basically what we're looking at here this is my uh, Forda Switch 448D that I have it's in standalone local management mode uh, it's still <laughs> still thinks it's the 70s um, but it's running version 601 so I've already got the release notes downloaded and let's see if I can open that in Adobe real quick so we're sitting here looking at it, we scroll down upgrade information you can go to FortiSwitch 6.2.2 from FortiSwitch 3.5.0 or newer you're going to be pretty hard pressed to find a FortiSwitch that's not running 3.5.0 or newer but if you are just update whatever it is 350 and then jump from 350 to what you want to. So, uh, so we log into our Forda switch. We looked at the version that we're running. We checked the release notes of the code that we're going to. So then we're able to go, hey, this can in fact jump to where we're going. So the next step is to actually make a backup of the config. Now, if you're running 6.0 or newer version of code, Forda switch is going to automatically save a lot of this for you, anyways. So you just go to config, backup automatically save, tell it to update, and then you look at your revisions. You can actually look at the revision itself by going to revisions and underneath this revision thing, just clicking that. I like to copy this and throw it in its own little notepad. I don't care about this Forda switch, so I'm not going to do that here, but keep a copy of that so if you have to bring this thing back to life from the very beginning, you can wipe the firmware code, load the original code that was on it, restore your config that way, and be on your way. So. I'm going to go to firmware, and just like you would on a FortiGate, choose your file. We're going to go to build 194, which is 6.2.2. Click apply. Now, what it's doing right now is it's updating the code up to the Forda switch, and then the Forda switch will uh, reboot and go through its firmware update process. And then once it comes back, it should be loaded on 6.2.2. So, while that's doing that, I'll cover a couple of things that uh, you guys may find beneficial. Um, for the switch is making giant leaps as far as the feature set that they have, everything that they, they're going through, etc. Um, actually, you guys will like this. It's actually showing me the status updates of each, each section. It showed where it erased it shows where it's writing the new conf uh, the new firmware to it, it'll verify it and then it'll reboot the switch which is really really cool. Um, most people aren't used to getting that level of detail. Um, but anyways, FortiSwitch is making, FortiNet, it's making relatively large uh, feature increases, stability increases, things like that. A lot of upgrades and updates that are making and the devices just run a lot better. They're still not on par with like a Cisco switch or anything like that, but if you have a Fortinet security stack in your environment, there's no reason why you wouldn't just start using these. Um, I've deployed a lot of these in data centers lately, uh, doing everything from storage to you know VM front end, data access, things of that nature, and they work very, very well. If you're going to run it in a 
a managed mode from a Fortic gate, definitely run the latest version of code. It's still got its quirks, it still has its bugs, but at least then, you know, you know you're running the latest and greatest. The switches are actually the only thing that I don't follow my normal should you update the firmware path because normally you know if I'm running a FortiGate or a Forti Manager or a Forti anything really I go does the firmware provide a feature set that I need that I don't currently have does it fix a bug that I'm currently experiencing does it fix a vulnerability that I do not wish to be um, uh, threatened by um, can I mitigate that threat by patching that CVE or whatever happens to be going on. Um, for the switch, I pretty much run the latest version of code no matter what. Reason being is the bugs that we tend to run into there are things like gratuitous ARPs not working, which I don't know if you guys have looked at the release notes, but that seems to be the general gist of things anyways. So, but yeah. Um, this thing is currently in the restart process. It takes a little bit, so a good bit of this video is probably actually going <laughs> to be us waiting on it um, to come back up and then we can look at the code and see from there. Outside of this, um, please don't hesitate to post in the comments below what you guys are looking for as far as for the switch specific configurations. Um, I'm going to do a couple of LLDP uh, videos and things like that. So. Let's see what this puppy does while it's rebooting. If it's going to make us just hang out and wait the entire time. I used to complain about the length of time a 448 or, you know, a thousand series switch took to reboot. And then I had a client that had to deploy a whole bunch of the, uh, the FS-108s. Those are horrible switches, don't buy this. Stick with like the 24 port or newer. For starters, the 8 port's a monstrous switch. It uh, it basically gets you in a situation where it's, it's like a 12 or 24 port switch with only 8 ports on it really. 10 if you count the SFPs. So, this puppy is at 62%, oh. Just heard it spin up fans in the back. The switch is a louder switch, by the way. Um, if you have a 448D, don't put it in an area where there's going to be people. Keep it in a closet. Of course, you know, most environments you would hope that you have IDFs and MDFs spread out accordingly, but in the event that you need a switch that has to be in a room with someone, maybe it's one of those wall mounted racks or something like that, don't do a 448. Stick to like a 248D. Um, those are good switches. I push a lot of those. So, let's see. Come on up. 100%. So, we're back at the switch screen. We can log in. <laughs> so, in 6.2 code, they actually enforce password complexity and things like that. So it absolutely will not let you keep that default admin password. It's a good thing to have. So let's update that. That's probably going to make me type it in. It's just one of those little rinky-dink admin pattern-driven passwords that I use for demos because it's just easy peasy. So. gonna let me manage you anymore. Well interesting.
Hmm. See if we can SSH to it, see if it gives us any details there. Let's just write in. Uh, I guess it's a good about three minutes of awkwardness right anyways <laughs> it must have been a yeah looks like there's a bug in 622 because it's got me logged in a whole bunch of times so either that or my version of Chrome just wasn't wasn't jogging right but as you can see it's running 622 it's up and running I'll do a, a drill through on what the new settings and everything were we got the, the release notes here that actually show us what's new. The main stuff is resolved issues. See, resetting PoE, reboot, DCP snooping is enabled, Pixie boot doesn't start. Switches go offline randomly. That's a pretty big deal, right? and is no longer susceptible to these four CVs. So, that's the short and gritty of it. Wasn't expecting the awkward pause where it was gonna let me log in six times but not actually update the GUI page. Maybe it's a bug or maybe it's just a glitch with uh, Chrome there, but as, as you guys saw logging into the CLI and I was able to pull it through. Um, that's how you update the firmware on a Forda switch, just like a Forda game. It actually gives you a much better progress bar. It shows you, hey, I'm erasing existing firmware. Now I'm loading the new firmware. Now I'm verifying it, making sure the checksums and everything match. That way you don't end up breaking your device, right? And then it shows you an actual progress bar for the, re for the reboot. Um, don't put your FortiGates up to 622 yet. I have one. Fortigate that's running 622 with the Forda manager that's running 622. I got issues, man. It's frustrating. So I'm dealing with that. But it is what it is. If you guys have questions specific to the Forda switches, post them in the comments below. Um, we're going to run through the actual individual settings and some LLDP stuff, as I previously mentioned. And then from there, we can uh, do a deep dive on the, the management side of things, using your Fortigate to manage the Forda switch and then getting all the benefits that you can there. So. You guys have a good evening, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks.